So the first question I want to address is the big picture. Uh, we've been growing under the sun and the wind for thousands of years. Uh, people are may think that that's the natural, conventional way to grow food. Yep. And now we're seeing these innovations uh, in warehouses, fully indoors under 100% artificial lighting. And a, a lot of people are seeing these projects in their news feed, on the media, and kind of wondering, you know, is this for real? Right. How, how did we get to this point in agriculture where we're growing crops indoors? Yeah. Um, I, I end up eating a lot of crow every time I discuss this topic because mm -hmm. Years ago, I said there's absolutely no way you can replace free sunlight with light that costs you money, with artificial yeah. lighting, right? Mm -hmm. And that is kind of, that is a very fair criticism. It's a criticism that I had for a very long time until I really started looking at the cost of free sunlight. And the realization there was that sunlight is not actually free. There's a lot of cost to mm -hmm. sunlight in a greenhouse and in a field. So when we talk about a crop, the, the classic genetics equation is phenotype equals genetics plus environment. Mm -hmm. And basically the phenotype is the crop that you see, what you eat, how it tastes, what it looks like, um, how it grows in the field. And um, that is a combination of two, two very general things, the genetics of the plant and the environment that the plant was grown in. Mm -hmm. So in field conditions, we've always really focused in on genetics because the environment is almost impossible to control, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we've seen ag shift. So a lot of people wonder, why, why do we do so much production in the Central Valley of California, in Southern Arizona, in Mexico, right? And there's all sorts of um, answers to that question, you know, having to do with the cost of energy and this, that, and the other thing. But ultimately, it comes down to the fact that Agriculture shifts to the environments where the environmental variables are more predictable, mm -hmm. more benign, and where agriculture is more possible. It seems very logical, right? Mm -hmm. What that represents is as a grower, we are trying to control the environment of our crop a little bit better, or mm -hmm. at least place it in a place where the environment is a little more friendly. Mm -hmm. So that ultimately is why ag is shifting indoors, mm -hmm. right? We can be very good at controlling genetics. We spent hundreds of years hundreds of years focusing on genetics. And today uh, we have started to say, okay, what are the limitations here? And what do we need to do to, to continue to improve these crops? And the answer is we need better control of the environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, historically what this has meant is shifting production into greenhouses mm -hmm. uh, because we can better control the environment there. But even in greenhouses, our ability to control that environment uh, to the degree that, that many folks uh, want, that, that we ultimately will have to control the environment in mm -hmm. order to see these massive leaps in our productivity, mm -hmm. to see these massive leaps in, in the quality of the plant material that we're, that we're producing um, is more likely going to happen in much more mm -hmm. intensive, highly engineered environments. Mm -hmm.